This is the Panasonic Lumix GH6. It has a brand new 25 megapixel sensor capable of up to 13 plus stops of dynamic range. Using a technique called sensor shift, the much improved in-body stabilization system offers 100 megapixel handheld high resolution photos. Another major change is the newly designed LCD arm and hinge that rests on top of a weather sealed ventilation system. Among a litany of fully customizable function buttons, multiple power options, and ruby red accents, the GH6 gets a substantial assist from the all-new CF Express Media Card system. With all of these pieces, the GH6 manages to offer a staggering array of video resolutions and codecs that is unrivaled by any camera in its price bracket. I've been waiting a long time for this camera, so let me simply say that I set up a series of shoots to see what the GH6 can really do. So the first thing I want to talk about is the sensor and processor, or the brain of the GH6. While the video specs are impressive and arguably the main selling point of this camera, it seems a bit odd to me that the majority of reviewers have skipped over just how good this camera is at photography. This is the first 25 megapixel sensor for Micro Four Thirds, and almost immediately it became apparent how useful that extra 5 megapixel bump will be for the longevity of this camera. 5 megapixels may not seem like that much, but when you see the results of punching in to 100% and having that extra resolution and sharpness to crop in and adjust, it's going to be hard to go back to the 20 megapixel sensor of the GH5. Equally as impressive is the processor of the GH6, which allows the sensor to really open up full throttle and produce 75 frames per second raw burst in electronic shutter mode, which is just mind-blowing. Obviously, Panasonic built this camera with a preference for video, and the byproduct of offering such high-resolution, fast frame rate video options is that the GH6 sensor is one of the most powerful sensors on the market for photography. Also enhanced is the in-body stabilization, which now offers 7.5 stops of rock-solid handheld use. This new stabilizer also introduces sensor shift. Now, this feature was formerly called Pixel Shift and was available on the Panasonic G9 that produced 80 megapixel photos, but was only capable of being used while on a tripod and couldn't contain fast moving objects. With that extra stop, you are now free from the constraints of the tripod and can shoot 50 or 100 megapixel photos. My tests on this are limited as I don't think this particular feature is good for portraits, but the few times I did use it, I found the only limiting factor to be the time in between shots, which was around 15 seconds for stitching. And when under a time constraint with a model or a client, high res mode may not be the ideal choice. I feel like the feature lends itself better to product photography or potentially even wildlife photography if your subject is mostly stationary. Now, all of my lenses are Micro Four Thirds lenses, which means that they don't have autofocus, nor do they have optical image stabilization, so getting to see that extra stability working in real time was phenomenal. As for the autofocus, since none of my lenses have that as a feature, I elected not to cover this. However, there is one focus issue that I do want to go over, as it's a rather large problem, and that is the loss of the 20x magnification focus assist tool. The focus assist tool on the GH6 at the time of recording only features a 6x magnification, and as someone who shoots with super fast, fully manual lenses almost exclusively, one of my biggest challenges is focus. At f0.95 without 20x magnification, the margin of error is razor thin, and more than a few shots were out of focus simply because I was not able to tell how off I was until getting into post. From what I can tell, the entire picture pipeline has changed due to the focus assist now being able to work during recording. I would really love to see the 20X come back for photo mode, as I truly believe it's the one feature that might be a deal breaker in purchasing this camera for me. So let's talk about the color science for a moment. As far as the color profiles go, almost all of these photos were monitored in the standard color profile with no adjustments to the settings. Along with the extra resolution comes an extra stop of dynamic range, putting the GH6 up to 13 plus stops. 
Now, I don't have the fancy light charts to test this, but having used the GH5 every day for the last five years, I can absolutely see a difference here. As a result, I find the colors of the GH6 much more pleasing and easy to work with straight out of the box. However, I will say that my subject skin tones tend to shift more to the yellow than they do on the GH5. I'm not sure if this is actually Panasonic's new color science, or if it's the way that Lightroom or Premiere is interpreting the footage and LUTs. It's not a huge issue, but I will say that I've had to do more skin tone adjustment than I did previously. The Dynamic Range Boost, or DRB mode, is turned on by default for photos and can be toggled in video. DRB has a few drawbacks, but the main one being that in video mode, it locks you to 2000 ISO, which is still relatively clean, but visibly grainier than non-DRB mode. I will say that when the image is exposed properly, the extra stop is well worth it as the image it creates is gorgeous, but it seems like there isn't as much wiggle room as you might think, and still requires the extra attention to detail not to blow out your image. For now, I would actually recommend setting your zebras to the lower level just to be on the safe side if you care about preserving your highlights. Moving on, let's discuss the body, because as strange as it sounds, the body is where I have the majority of concerns. The first large issue for me was the EVF. I was really hoping the GH6 would take parts from the S line for the viewfinder as the EVF doesn't seem like a huge improvement after five years, especially considering the viewfinders on the S1H and even the G9 are far superior. It's not bad by any means, but I would have loved to have had a size update. However, a plus is that the eye cup now has a tiny release button rather than just being held on by gravity, or tiny clips that eventually wear out. Another glaring issue is the dummy battery port, which now contains a single hole for the Panasonic pigtail to hang out of. Compared to the GH5, which had a small flap that lets you use any cable you wanted, you now have to use the pigtail option from Panasonic instead of being able to go straight to whatever connector you want. Now, I may be in the minority here, but I genuinely don't like the new button set up on the rear. I know there were many complaints about accidental button presses, but I honestly never experienced that in any impactful way. I admire Panasonic's use of space, but it's taken me longer than I care to admit to adapt to the new layout. So what about the good bits? Well, the new LCD hinge is absolutely fantastic, there's no other way to put it, and I'm ecstatic about it making the jump from the S1H to this camera. It's been a real pleasure to use because it caters to any angle and any height. A bonus feature is that it now clears the HDMI port, which is great for when you want to record RAW using an external monitor. I also really love the sharper finger grips with the hard indentation rather than the roll-off that the GH5 has. Another fantastic change is a proper media door. My GH5 door has not held up at all over the years and sticks every time I try to open it. This is also my first time using CF Express, and I have to say that it's a very strong move from Panasonic to introduce this after so many years on SD. The only downside I've encountered so far is just how hot the card can get during longer record times on high resolutions. Which leads to this scene, which was shot for the 48 hour film competition using 5.7K ProRes. So, how does it feel to be published in nature? Surreal, I think would be the word that I would use. Yeah, surreal. Kind of like all of this. Especially with him. I honestly, I just, I don't, I really don't feel that proud right now. I just, I feel like my whole life is slipping through my fingers and I'm leaving behind everything. But you know, I'm, I'm very grateful for you and I'm very grateful that you're here to help me. So, thank you. I've been wondering if you ever truly cared about me. How many times are we going to have this conversation? I've lost count. 
You are the one who didn't want to come with me. That was on you. So this is where we're at. Adam, I do love you. I think I love you more than I've loved anybody in my entire life. I do want to have this conversation with you, but I just can't right now. Please. After a few months of using this camera on various photography and video shoots, I came away from this experience not really knowing whether or not to purchase it. It's kind of a strange feeling for me to not know whether or not I like this camera, because for all the strides the GH6 made, and all of the crazy features it has for its price, it almost feels like a fever dream finally getting to use this camera. Five years is a long time to wait, and the grass continues growing emerald green in other pastures. For a while, I was convinced the only reason that I stuck with Panasonic for as long as I have is because of the Voigtlander lenses that I owned. I thought that maybe if I could take these lenses to another system, I wouldn't have to face the sunk cost fallacy, or that I could get bigger jobs by owning professional cinema cameras. But the reality is, I'm a Panasonic user because for over a decade, not a single time have I ever felt creatively limited by this brand. From the GH line to the S line and the Vericam line, Panasonic cameras just fit the way that I like to work. They allow me to produce images that I have in my mind's eye, to capture the beauty of the people that I meet, the places that I go, and the stories that I want to tell. The really wonderful part about the GH6 is that it doesn't feel like a new frontier you have to tame, or a piece of technology you're constantly fighting. Using the GH6 feels natural, it's comfortable, and familiar. Like finally coming home after a long journey. After all, there's no place like home. There's no place like home.